What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. This is now Tropical Storm Fiona we are looking at, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Tropical Storm Fiona has not only formed, but it's already a pretty decent strength tropical storm, ladies and gentlemen. It now has winds of 50 miles per hour with higher gusts. The pressure is 1,002 millibars, and the tropical storm force winds extend out 140 miles from the center. And if we take a look at the cone right here, this is where it's going. We have tropical storm watches issued for parts of the Leeward Islands right there. So if you're in that watch area, start preparing now. I just want to make two quick points real quickly while we're on this. First of all... Fiona is already stronger than what we were already anticipating before this. We were only anticipating a 45 mile per hour tropical storm at the time of landfall in the Leeward Islands, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're at a 50 mile per hour tropical storm with winds expected to strengthen up to 60, potentially 65 mile, uh, miles per hour according to some models uh, as it's approaching land. So that makes the wind threat that much more dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. I know I keep saying ladies and gentlemen a lot, but I want to emphasize that. The second thing we need to talk about is that a lot of the majority of the tropical storm force winds are pretty much on the eastern half of the, uh, of the storm. That's because there's wind shear still impacting it right here. This is it right here. The center of circulation is around right here. So there is about 25 knots of wind shear impacting this uh, this system a little bit. So either that's going to have to weaken or that's going to have to kind of drift up a little bit more to the north uh, for the, really those uh, those winds to start kind of uh, invading more of the western part of the system. So, yeah, convection definitely can't could uh, form in this part of it if that wind shear starts calming down a little bit. So, yeah, situation we're going to have to keep an eye on. Probably The thing that's probably attracting the most uh, strengthening from the, at this point is this right here. Global sea temperatures, 28 degrees Celsius. These waters are piping hot, ladies and gentlemen. We are looking at 83 plus degree warm water from basically the central Atlantic all the way to the Gulf, all the way up to Bermuda. And we're looking at some areas up to 30 degrees Celsius or even eight or 86 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States. So that's how good the warm water is. The only thing that's really limiting its, its strengthening if it, that of it going any further is the wind shear. So yeah, that's pretty much what we're looking at right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the track models and the intensity. Track models are pretty interesting right here. They have it start turning as it's approaching after it leaves the Dominican Republic right there. Some models have it taken a hard right turn right there towards Bermuda. A couple of models have a kind of more of a moderate uh, turn impacting some of the Bahamas as well as the Turks and Caicos. Other models uh, are either not going far enough or have it impacting the Bahamas and turning a little later. So that's what we're going to have to look at. The GEPS uh, model run right here, the GEPS ensembles rather, they have it uh, moving through Hispaniola. And then through the Bahamas and potentially making a landfall in South uh, or North Carolina, according to the official track right there. We do have spaghetti plots. Some of them have it going uh, out to sea. Some of it have it going into the Gulf of Mexico. And others have it either making landfall in Florida or the Carolinas right there. So that's something we're going to have to continue to pay attention to. And I'll continue to update you guys as time continues to progress. Intensity miles are also interesting. The CTCI just goes off a limb and just explosively intensifies to Category 4 strength. That seems a bit outlandish for the time being, but is it off the table? At least for when it opens open water, excuse me, as it enters open water, rather. Uh, probably not, but right now it is a little outlandish, so I will say that. Probably the strongest at its absolute peak it could get is potentially an 80 mile per hour hurricane like the H Wharf is, act, is advocating for right there. Other than that, majority of the models keep it at tropical storm strength. These models are a little bit outdated, so I do apologize for that. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, some model runs right here. What I'm going to do is run two uh, runs of the h -Wharf model. The reason I'm doing this is because of how much these models deviate. And because this h -Wharf model beforehand had this as a major hurricane and as a hurricane impacting the Lesser Antilles. So let's go ahead and run this model just to show you what this does. So basically this develops, this organizes, and this strengthens as it approaches the Leeward Islands. And then it strengthens into a hurricane. Potentially makes landfall in, in several of these areas right there, and then it moves uh, to the north of Puerto Rico and kind of strengthens from there as a one as a 950 mile per hour, 125 mile per hour category three hurricane. The 18Z is also interesting. It still advocates for a hurricane, nevertheless, but it is a little di bit different right there. 
uh, for a couple of reasons. First reason, this is a, a, tr a strong tropical storm as it moves through the Leeward Islands. It does potentially strengthen into a hurricane as it approaches the Virgin Islands, though, and it either makes landfall or a close brush to Puerto Rico right there, and then it moves into open waters right there. So, yeah, that's how much these things deviate right there. So that's really going to wrap up this for this video. I know this is late, so I do apologize for that, but I wanted to get this information out there. So with that being said, that's going to end it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out. It helps me make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day. Stay safe.